Our next speaker is Donovan Campbell, the VP of IT and Best Practices for Forum Energy Technologies. Uh, Donovan runs a high potential leadership program as well as the company's largest operational excellence initiative. He's focused on making modern information so systems a source of competitive advantage for forum energy, which as many of you will know in the, uh, in the energy space is, is very important, by putting the company's plants onto a single platform that the technology and process tools can utilize. Ladies and gentlemen, Donovan Kemp. All right, good afternoon. Thank you guys so much for, uh, for letting me be here. Thank you so much for, uh, for paying attention. And um, I, want to, uh, I want to tell sort of the story of, of my company's digital transformation journey today. And I want to tell that story by, by starting with kind of who we are, what we do, because we just barely miss making uh, Marshall's checkerboard slide over there. But um, start with that, move to the external environment, because we've been through quite a bit in the last uh, six years. And it was really the external environment that provided us the burning platform to realize that uh, we agree with what Monica said, no longer are products going to be good enough in the future. You have got to transform to more. Uh, and so our environment showed us that we had to change. I'll talk a little bit about our journey and then talk about where we want to go in the future. But before I get started, looking at a lot of this, I feel like I'm looking at the movie Blade Runner. My company is more like the Beverly Hillbillies. But I guarantee you that this journey can be undertaken. And in fact, in many ways, uh, the fact that I'm even up here talking should give some of you hope because of everyone in this room, I am by far the least qualified to lead any sort of digital transformation journey. My undergrad is a history degree. I spent time in the military, not in any technical discipline, but in the infantry. I was a United States Marine for five years. And if those of you, any of you in the mil uh, audience are Marines, today's the 241st birthday of our Corps. So happy birthday, Marine Corps. You're off. So I spent time in the infantry, and my background of business is in sales and operations. I, I could barely spell IT when I took the job. Uh, but nonetheless, we, we've been on the journey. So who, who is Forum Energy Technologies? Well, we are a very young company. We were formed in 2010 with the merger of five private companies. We make highly engineered products for, largely for the energy sector, although we sell to other sectors as well. This picture is relatively representative. We sell things that operate at high temperature, high pressure on the open floor or on the ocean floor, uh, products that operate close to the actual production on the surface, separating impurities from oil and gas and the liquids that come out of the ground. We are a global manufacturer. We have facilities all throughout North America, throughout Europe, throughout um, the Middle East, and throughout East Asia. Um, and we've done about a billion dollars in acquisitions over the last five years, so we're a very highly acquisitive comp uh, company, which as a guy leading the IT section can be quite a headache at times. So I've picked some of the uh, cooler products we make here just to give you a flavor. Some of our valves don't look super cool, but we make things from choke and kill manifolds, which is the red thing you see on the right, to uh, specialized torque machines to, to make things uh, really work together at very, very precise measurements to underwater ROVs uh, that do work at the ocean's floor. So very, very precise products. And the story of our transformation really has to start uh, with the external environment. These four charts kind of explain it. So when we went public, or when we formed in 2010, the external industry was on a tear. Um, oil was going up rapidly. The rig count, the United States rig count, land rig count was going up dramatically. Both of those are huge business drivers of ours. And as you can see, we were the beneficiaries of that boom. Our revenue grew sort of at a 30% CAGR as did our headcount. The whole industry was booming. A quarter million jobs were added. Uh, it, was, it was a really interesting time to be in the industry, but it revealed certain things about us, and I'll explain that in just a second. The last two years, however, have been very, very different, and again, these four charts explain it. Over the last two years, we've seen the most significant decline in the energy industry since arguably the 80s, so the worst certainly in a generation. Oils crashed, the US land rate count went from almost 2,000 at its peak to about 363 at its bottom. And we followed right along with that. So our revenues went from a billion eight at our height, now down to about 600 million. Our employee base was cut in half. 
our industry went through a bust. We lost over 350,000 jobs in the last two years. And really that boom and bust cycle has been what has started us on our transformation journey and actually allowed us to accelerate our transformation journey. So what I show here is the price of oil starting at when our company was formed. When we started our digital transformation, which you see here is called Project Fusion, and, and kind of how we've chosen to invest as the external environment is, has changed around us. So as everything was, was going up, we formed, and we were public in 2012, and we struggled as an early public company. We missed estimates four quarters in a row before we finally got our act together. And even after that, what we discovered was, particularly in 2014, we were not a scalable company. To, to keep up with that kind of growth, we were breaking. And what we saw was we were scrambling, we were reactive to, the, to, to things coming in we could not predict, we were behind the times. Uh, what we found uh, was that we were largely dependent on individual heroes and people just knew how to do everything in their head. Uh, that, that is not a sustainable or scalable company. We have very highly engineered products and we manage the business like it's 1983. In the, in the first, quarter on the job, I took, I kid you not, five calls, various different times throughout the quarter, they all kind of something like this. Hey, Donovan, you, you have got to help us. Uh, we're at site X, we are losing tens of thousands of dollars a day, critical system is down, you got to get it back up. Okay, no problem, please tell me, what is this critical system? Oh, oh, it's our fax line. We're, 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 we're missing tons of orders because we can't receive the faxes from our customers. And I remember just kind of throwing up in my mouth a little bit and thinking, <laughs> like 1983 called, it would like its business model back. Like we can't seriously be dependent on that, but, but we were. Um, and that, 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 sort of, that sort of backwardsness manifests itself, late deliveries, quality issues, and ultimately customers that aren't getting the experience that they would like in dealing with us. Yes, they'll buy our products, but only because it's a boom. The products work, but you guys are not an easy company to deal with. And so what we decided to do was, uh, was to transform our company by leading with technology. It touches almost every aspect of the business. Uh, as um, Stachy just illustrated, it changes culture. So we formed a cross-functional team called Project, we called it the Project Fusion Team. I asked the company to allow us to designate that team as our high potential leadership team so it'd be attractive externally and internally to recruit people onto. We ultimately put the leadership of that team, which is me, uh, together with the IT team, because we realized that to lead that sort of journey, you had to have both the business, a business-led change initiative, which is us, and the traditional technology unified under one leader. Uh, and then we started rolling out our systems site by site. And what we focused on was establishing uh, sort of standardized on our ERP and MES system. And, and what we want to be at the end of this journey as a scalable, uh, standardized, and ultimately unified company that acts as if it is, in fact, a unified global company. So here's where we're at now. And if we look at this, this slide, it's a, called an example enterprise architecture. The things in red are the areas for uh, systems where we have lots of homegrown systems or, or really no solution at all in that architecture. The green is where we have chosen to focus and spend a large majority of our time and energy, and that is standardizing, standardizing our ERP, reporting and MES system. And then sort of on the left-hand side, the orange, is what we plan to take on in the very near future. Because at the end of the day, I believe that what we're doing from an MES and shop floor and ERP perspective is table stakes. It, it, it is not where we need to go. It's not what has been discussed here is creating platforms and experiences for the future. It is not moving beyond the product. So what I want to do is use technology-driven change to build new business models in our industry. The next thing that we're going to focus on is consolidating our innovation platform. We've got Inovia up and running at one of our pilot plants, uh, one of our large manufacturing facilities in Texas. Um, if I think of the stack, there, there are certain things that I think it can enable for us in terms of changing our business model. And the first is this. I think what we can do is we can make our customers quite a bit more efficient by providing them with smart products that help them understand what is going on in real time, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 feet underneath the Earth's surface. But to do that, 
I've got to have all of my 3D data in one place. I can't do it if it is the way it is now, which is scattered all over the world. The second sort of business model I want to institute, in, in, at least in our company, is, is an e-commerce one where we've made the purchasing um, process frictionless for our customers. Right now, the vast majority of our orders are received. In fact, almost all of our orders are received via email when someone mails us a PDF of a purchase order. I, I sort of get personally offended every time I see that in an age where I can hit one-click ordering on Amazon and the thing will show up at my door two days later. There is no reason why we need to continue to operate as we're currently operating in my company or in our industry. So what I want to do is really transform from the old business model of receiving POs to one where you have a, a frictionless e-commerce experience. But I can't do that unless all of the parts and all the products that they're associated with are in one place so that my customers can look at that, understand what they need, understand the ancillary parts that go with the large capital thing that they're going to buy, and then place the order. And then finally, and this is one of the things that I, I get most excited about, is uh, I, want to be, I want to become a company that helps our customers op optimize their own operations because we are able to take the data that's coming in from the field. We're able to look at that and we're able to go back to them and say, hey, for example, you have 10 rigs in this basin and five of them on this side have 20% greater life. Uh, they are 10% they are more efficient and they are overall have less downtime. And then these other five rigs. And we think that is because you are doing A, B, C, and D on those rigs. And we think you should do A, B, C, and D on these other rigs. What a partner we are to you because we're not just helping ourselves. We're helping you guys get better at what you do every day. But to do that, I've got to have smart products that feed their data into a real-time analytical model that can provide us insights into the ways in which not just we, but also they should run their, their, uh, their companies. So this is where we're going. We are not there yet. It has not been a journey without pain. I, do, I have a substantial amount of scars on my back, and I'm, I'm happy to talk to any of you about those. But I will tell you guys that uh, Dassault has been a great partner to us. They, they really have been. I wish I could say we've always had our act together as a company. We haven't. I wish I could say we started the engagement the right way. We didn't. But through all of that, they have really stuck with us and have, a, have done a really good job of not just helping us do what we want to do, but helping us envision the future and then helping be a partner that can help us create that future along with them. So um, we are trying to transform ourselves. We're hoping we can help transform our industry. We're relying on Dassault to help us do that. So Bernard, wherever you are, no pressure. Thanks, guys.